Good afternoon and welcome to our first student intern virtual panel. I'm David Powers, the Assistant Director of Internships at the Lockheed Martin Career Development Center. I assist our employer partners with developing internship programs and direct our MAVS EDGE internship program. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We're excited about the group of students who have agreed to participate uh, and we know you'll gain a lot from hearing about their experience. Um, you may begin sending questions to the panel at any time during the event by using the ask a question button. We'll address student questions uh, near the end of the presentation. But before we get started and meet our panelists, I have a few quick announcements. September is an exciting month in the Career Center. We have a great list of events and services that we've shared with you in the comments section. So if you'll please take a moment to visit uh, and save that information. Uh, it's something you want to refer back to, uh, I'm sure in the near future. Uh, I'd like to quickly highlight a few upcoming events for your calendar. First, we have our MAVS EDGE employer internship panel. We'll be meeting with a group of employers at the same time tomorrow. Uh, obviously, that's Thursday. We we'll have three area employers with us to discuss best practices for landing an internship, how to best network with employers. They'll share tips on how you can set yourself apart uh, in the internship search. And again, that is uh, tomorrow at one. That will be a Zoom event. Uh, get prepared to be ready to go next week for our virtual all majors job and internship fair. We'll be hosting that on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Again, that's September the 15th, 16th and 17th from one to five. Uh, very cool virtual format. You have a link to the registration in the comments section, so please uh, join us for that event as well. We also encourage you to follow us. Follow our Lockheed Martin Career Development Center LinkedIn spotlight page. Uh, here you're going to find all kinds of useful information, including job opportunities, tips for obtaining internships, event information. You'll get introduced to some of our uh, EDGE employer partners. Uh, we've also created a student internship networking group uh, that you're invited to join, and those links are also available to you uh, in the meeting chat, along with a list of our Career Development Center virtual services, and then there is an overview of what the EDGE program is in your, uh, in your comments section as well. Uh, the moderator for today's panel is uh, Kimberly Garski. Kimberly is the MAVS EDGE program uh, facilitator and is working on her master's degree in information systems in the College of Business. I'll now turn the presentation over to Kimberly. Thank you, David. Welcome again to our student panel. We'll begin by giving an opportunity to meet our panelists. So first up, we'll go to Ashley to introduce herself. Hi, hi, my name is Ashley Davini. I'm a linguistics and Russian double major here at UTA. Um, and just briefly, I was a intern over the summer for an organization called Living Tongues um, Institute for Endangered Languages, and they just focus on language documentation and revitalization. And uh, I'm a senior graduating in December. Thank you, Ashley. Next we'll go to Javier. Yeah, thank you, Kimberly. Uh, so my name is Javier Garcia. Uh, I am a senior at UTA. I'm on my last semester, so it's my final stretch. Um, and so I'm in mechanical engineering, and I've thankfully had the opportunity to internship at Delta Steel Technologies for a year and a half, um, and Lockheed Martin for this past year and a half as well. Uh, I'll be continuing that throughout uh, I graduate. And my position at Lockheed Martin is electromechanical uh, engineer, which is basically electronic packaging. Thank you. All right, thank you. And next we'll go to Kavya. Oh, hey everyone, I'm Kavya. So I'm basically posting my master's in quantitative finance and I will be graduating next semester. That would be in May 21. So this is supposed to be my second last semester and it's actually going good. Uh, talking about my internship, I interned at Pokia, which is located in Irvine, California as a business intelligence intern. Thank you. And lastly, we'll go to Tao. Hi everyone, my name is Tao. I am currently a senior here at UTA, double majoring in marketing and management, and I am currently an intern at the North Central Texas Council of Governments, which is a regional government agency as a public involvement and government relations intern. So I assist with public affairs and within city and county government. Thank you. So next we'll hear a little bit more about um, 
the interns uh, internship experience and their exact roles at uh, each company. So we'll go back to Ashley to give us a little more information about the Living Tongues internship she had. Yeah, so um, my main task was uh, annotating sound files that they've pulled, uh, that other researchers in the organization had pulled from uh, speakers of the Sora language, which is an endangered language in India. Um, and basically, um, we just edit and annotate the sound files so we see the phonetic transcriptions of them and we can uh, like uh, basically more easily integrate that into their systems uh, that Living Tongues has um, and kind of quality control and things like that. And then I also worked on the back end of their uh, website called Talking Dictionaries, which um, basically allows, you know, the general public to look at different words and stuff uh, and different phrases from endangered languages all across the world. Um, and so my specific task was that was with that was just inputting um, information in and again, kind of quality control and making everything, making sure everything was working properly. Very cool. Very cool. Next, we'll go to Javier. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and so to quickly cover the Delta Steel internship, um, that was um, basically they had created assembly lines for the steel industry. So I was able to get a whole bunch of hands on experience um, with machining and, and inspecting different things and creating engineering drawings. And so transitioning to Lockheed Martin, um, I was in the electromechanical engineering roles. And so with that, it's basically just making sure that all the electronics are, you know, fitting correctly and properly in in whatever product it is. In my case, it's uh, the Pack Three missile. And so, as my second rotation of internships, um, to I'm sorry, to start off, my first rotation was an MFC Grand Prairie, and that's where I worked on the Pack Three missile for electronic packaging. And my second rotation uh, has been very interesting. It's been a virtual role for Orlando uh, Lockheed Martin. And so I'm working on sort of those same related things, but on, on the Apache helicopter. Uh, and so that's more of the professional side, but I did want to quickly touch on like sort of the internship engagement side. And so Lockheed Martin, they have an incredible program where they are able to basically get these VPs and very high up people in the company uh, to take time out of their day and meet with all of us and, and answer questions. Yeah and really just help engage and make sure that we do get that professional development. Uh, and so it's been nothing but amazing, both in person and virtual. Awesome, thank you for that. And next we'll hear from Kavya a little bit more about her internships. Uh, if I talk about my internship, you know, this was first ever experience in the United States. So it was actually very really important to me and it's actually, you know, one of the experience which I cherish all over my life. So talking about my internship, you know, my main task was on SQL, as I always wanted to combine my financial skills with that of data analytics. So this was the time which I got and I learned how to make automated 400 plus reports using Tableau and Power BI. And this was my first project. The second project which I got was a bunch of data, which was not even database. So my first job was to make the database in a, in a structured way. And after that, I had to make a centralized database from the spreadsheets. So this was my job responsibilities. Yeah, sounds great. And lastly, we'll hear from Tao a little bit more about her internship. So for my internship experience, previously, since I'm a marketing and management major, I've had two marketing internships. However, this, this internship that I have as a public involvement and government relations intern is for the government. So it's definitely a shift from my previous internship. So I definitely had to adapt to that. So some of the things that I do for public as a public involvement and government relations intern is that I assist in overseeing city and government um, public affairs in all of North Texas. So I assist with community engagement and I also assist in planning projects using taxpayer money, which could help with infrastructure and transportation. And additionally, part of the marketing aspect is that I also help with drafting social media posts, creating graphics, copies, and community engagement tools for our elected officials, and then presenting those analytics to our elected officials about public involvement. 
Awesome. So yeah, as, as you can hear, uh, interns work in a variety of different industries. There are internships available across the board and interns work on real projects. It's not just getting coffee or making copies. They're working on real world experience. They're learning uh, extensions from the classroom. They're learning from VPs, as Javier said, or different higher up people in the organization. And so it's a really good experience. And so next we're going to talk about how to look for an internship and what the application process and the interview process is like. So we'll start with Ashley and hear about how she found her internship. Hi, so um, I think my biggest tip um, in trying to find an internship is networking, um, making sure you're putting yourself out there to different employers, um, even if you might not realize that they could be a potential employer. So I found my internship because I was doing a uh, project for a class on endangered languages, because that's something I'm really interested in. And um, I ended up getting to work with David Harrison, who's a founder of the Living Tongues organization, because my professor knew him as he came to speak at the university a while ago. Um, so she knew him and she put me in contact so I could give him an interview um, and use that for my research. And so um, even during that interview, he was a big idol of mine and I knew how important he was. So I did my best to kind of um, conduct myself professionally and uh, he really liked my interviewing skills and he said that because um, I was a freshman at the time I took this course so he said that you know two to three years down the road when you're looking for an opportunity let me know and so I decided to kind of keep in touch with him over those several years and just you know email and check in and um, then this past summer I emailed him asking him if he knew of anything that was happening and he forwarded me to the program director for Living Tongues Institute of Endangered Languages and so I think especially in my case it was really important that I network and maintain those relationships um, even if you don't realize there's a company that you should dream to work with like you need to um, make sure you maintain those relationships relationships stay professional yeah, thanks, Ashley. Yeah, absolutely. Great advice to so keep networking. I think we'll hear a little bit more about that from Javier as well. Yes, yeah, I was going to touch on, on the networking aspect and how that worked for me. Uh, and so my internship application and interview process uh, sort of happened all on the same day. And so it was kind of unusual. Um, uh, no, not kind of norm, but uh, I had heard that Lockheed Martin was actually having a two day event on campus, right? And so <clears throat> the first day was networking, again, listening to these VPs present uh, in person and then sort of have a sort of a little finger biting session where we can network with them. And I had ran into a gentleman who about almost a year ago, he had his own little uh, information session on electronic packaging. And me, just as a student, I figured, OK, you know, this is really cool. You know, I want to go learn about this. And so um, it was an amazing presentation. It wasn't no resume collections. There wasn't, you know, no interview process. It was just an informative session. And so a year later with this networking event, I ran into the same man and he had remembered me. And so I then found out he was a hiring manager for the electrical engineering department. And so it all just worked out, you know, luckily for me. And uh, the next day was the, you know, dress to impress, bring your resume uh, and interview and you could potentially get a job on the spot. And so luckily for me, those things lined up, but I understand that's not really the usual. Uh, and so one thing I did want to mention was that, you know, whether it is the company you're interested or not, I highly recommend you guys to go to these networking events and these info sessions because you never know who you can run into, whether it's the presenter or a student that can give you an opportunity. Right. And so another thing I forgot to mention on the previous question was that I am a, a student ambassador for Lockheed Martin. So my job is to recruit and sort of go through that original process. So if you guys are interested, uh, then please reach out to me and, and I can help in any way, whether that's, you know, reviewing your resume, um, interview tips, whatever it is, um, you know, I'm here to help. Awesome. Thank you so much for that advice and information, Javier. Uh, well, next we'll hear from Kavya. So my interview process was actually not that complicated. So it actually had like three rounds. Firstly, it was all about my resume. The HR called me up and she was like, this is the position and you applied for. 
So we're looking for intern at Okia, and this is this will be a virtual job. So because of the COVID, everything got frozen, and I actually I had so many opportunities before COVID, but then it gone wide enough. So this was one of the best. Uh, my interview took place. It was for 15, 20 minutes. It was very general about my resume, like what work experience I had and why I'm so much interested in this opportunity. The very next day I got a call stating that, uh, you know, there would be a second round and based on the ability, there would be a second round. So in my second round, that was a pure technical round. It was actually difficult, you know because it was all about coding. So they gave me like three questions and they wanted me to write a code for them. It got, I cleared that round and the third round was all about, you know, how the, it was with the HR again, but it was all about like the general thing, you know, the pay and everything. So this was the, you know, interview process which I had in the loops of round and it was very basic, but it was very deep if I talk about my technical round, so yeah. Yeah, awesome. And I think that that kind of internship interview will be applicable in the future to professional jobs. So it's definitely good practice. And next we'll hear from Tao. So since I was shifting from my, my previous marketing internships to more of a government administration internships, I definitely had to do some research because previously I've always found my internships through UTA job fairs, which are very important by the way, and Handshake as well, so definitely utilize those. And so, you know, after researching, I just started applying and for my internship um, interview process. So between the time that I interviewed and the time that I started working was about three and a half to four months. Since this is a government entity, I did have three rounds of interviews. So I interviewed with management, senior management, and also senior director of the entire department. And I also had to go through a security clearance, so background checks, drug tests, and a variety of tests where they just, you know, check off everything to ensure that, you know, you are a person of good character. And so, you know, based, based on all that, make sure you know um, you know, your job descriptions and make sure you have an understanding of what you're kind of getting yourself into so that there won't be any surprises later on. Yeah, definitely. All good advice from everyone. Definitely be sure that you're networking, using Handshake, going to the job fair, the internship fair, any events on campus where employers will be. All good advice, all great places that you can find an internship. So definitely keep your eyes open, and keep you researching and applying, and you never know what will happen. So next we're going to hear about um, what the positive aspects of the internship were, kind of what they, what our students gained from doing an internship and what their best part was. So we'll start with Ashley this time again. Oh, Ashley, you're on mute. You're still on mute. Is that good? Can you hear me? There we go. Yeah, we can hear you now. <laughs> uh, I would say the best part of my internship was getting uh, a getting to meet people in an industry that I care a lot about. Um, it's kind of a smaller field, an unknown field, and it's very hard to get into. And so again, the aspect of getting to meet people, making a name for yourself, was very fun. Um, I also learned a lot about uh, working in a team. Um, we there were there was a group of maybe 15 to 20 interns, and we all kind of had to work together to get everything done. Um, and so it, I think that was a really important aspect that I enjoyed is working in a team to reach a goal. And I think in a lot of careers you have to do that. Very rarely are you just working by yourself. Um, and also just learning certain like professionalism. Like I've had jobs in the past, but in this specific job, you're kind of in the real world. You you need to learn how to write professional emails and um, different things like that. And those are kind of underrated skills that a lot of people don't think about, but some that you really need to work on developing, um, even with like your professors during college and stuff. So I would think that those are the things that I learned the most. Um, my favorite part though overall was just getting to work with language in general. Um, and it was just such a fun, fun task that I was doing was annotating the sound files. And that was my favorite thing that we did. Um, and just getting to work directly with the language and do something that I know would make a difference in the long run um, was was really important to me. Awesome. And next we'll hear Javier, same question. 
Okay, so when I think of this question, I feel like I can talk for hours because <laughs> like I've gained an extreme amount of information. And so with uh, when I'm going to graduate with about three years of internship experience and really personally, that is my master's degree. <laughs> like I, that's <laughs> it. For me. And so but I guess the similar to what Ashley said, it's just that like that real problem solving, you know, instead of you know reading the problem statement and making all these assumptions it's like no you can't make all these assumptions in the real world <laughs> you know you have to really account for everything and how things fit and how perfect the drawing is the tolerances you have to put on these drawings and so i've gained a lot of real world problem solving and just really understanding how things work uh, logistically you know product wise all these things and so that's more of the professional side and one of the main things I've gained is is really just seeing the value of teamwork in general, right? And so sort of, you know, with being at a company that is very, very self-paced, you know, you go as far as you want to and, and they're not going to force you nor feel any type of way about you if you want to stay there. And so I'm just learning, you know, kind of how these big corporations work. Uh, and just how to maneuver my way to to get to where I want to get to, and and again, I have a thousand more things to say, but you know I think that's <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Javier. And next we'll go to Kavya. Oh, uh, is it unmuted? Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So actually, if I talk about my experience, like I said, this was my first experience in states. Back in my home country, I actually had a work experience up around of around like two years and then this was my first experience if i talk about states you know i actually like one thing a lot about the employees and everybody who works that is the punctuality the most important thing which is which matters a lot is time you know they value your time a lot and which is actually i've learned you know how to be punctual how to submit your assignment on time secondly if i talk about my experience again then you know uh, what I believe is, you know, this doing internship is one of the major thing and the most important thing while you're studying because you tend to gain so much, so much of theoretical knowledge. But when you try to implement that knowledge, you get to know so much. Like, what are the big challenges you can uh, you can actually face? So this was one of the tasks uh, opportunity which I got and I learned a lot. Plus, it was the thing hands-on experience which I gained from the internship was really good and which I think you know whenever I do my next internship or you know my full-time when I look for a full-time opportunity this this is going to help me a lot. Definitely and last we'll hear Tao what was your the best part of your internship or what you've gained from it? I am definitely on the same boat as Javier. I could talk about what I've learned for <laughs> hours on end um, but just a few highlights, definitely a lot of professional skills and public speaking skills because for my job, I have to talk a lot, especially to a lot of, you know, elected officials, senior program managers and whatnot, and also being able to adapt to the constantly changing fast paced environment and adaptability is actually one of the top five skills that employers look for today. So be sure that you're able to adapt to new environments, especially learning for me i had to learn to have quick turnaround times and adapt um, there was one instance where i had to plan and propose a project within one business day so definitely high pressure and being able to work under pressure and that stress as well and you know no matter how good you are at something and no matter how good your skills are there's always room to learn and to grow and you know that skills those skills can be applicable to your future jobs and your future internships that you may have. And so you can talk about those experiences during interviews with your future employers as well. Yeah, absolutely. So as you can hear, our students have gained so much from their internships, especially you, you can tell that you get to work on real problems. You get to apply what you've learned in the classroom to the real world. You get to develop those soft skills that are so important, such as writing professional emails and just being professional and public speaking and all of those kinds of things that maybe you learned in the classroom, but now you take it out to the real world and it will help you go far in your career. 
So the next question that we have for our students is, what tips or advice would you give to other UTA students um, when they're seeking an internship and how to really make the most of it and gain as much as possible from that experience? So we've heard a little bit about networking already, but how can how would you advise students to get the most out of your of the experience? So we'll go to Ashley again. Uh, yeah, the first thing I would say, obviously, as we said, uh, networking is important. But I think um, one of the also important things is not really not being afraid to um, try something you think that like you weren't expecting, I guess, if that makes sense. So like if you get an opportunity and you're like, that doesn't sound like exactly what I want to do. Um, I think it's important to try and maybe try and see if that's something you like, because um, I actually had another internship this summer um, teaching uh, ESL um, through a online English teaching company. And uh, I did not enjoy that internship as much, but I, I was really glad to take that opportunity, see if I like it, test it out. And it's really important to be able to find what you do and don't like, because when I was doing the Living Tongues internship, it just made me appreciate that internship all that much more and made me realize that this is what I really want to do. And um, basically just not being afraid to say no to or no or yes to an opportunity if you need to say no for some reason you know something better will come down the road but also um take a chance on something that you might not have expected before yeah absolutely great advice to try new things um javier do you have something anything to add advice to students yeah uh and so i have three quick points the first one would be uh we've all heard it like no question is a dumb question really Right. And so, um, you know, every time that I just didn't quite get something in the meeting, I will ask, you know, to, for someone to please clarify. Um, and one thing that I've, you know, been told by my coworkers is that they appreciate that I ask a lot of questions and, and that I will admit when I don't know something. And I'm when I heard that, I, I would think, well, wouldn't anyone? But, you know, I'm learning that, like, people are really out here like, not asking questions and just making assumptions like like I said in class and so that leads to problems um, and so please please be open to just really ask as many questions um, as you feel you need right try to not ask the same question three four times in a row but you know you, you kind of get that and so the other one would be to honestly really take the opportunity seriously um, and I'm speaking more in regards to just really practicing your focusing skills, right? Because uh, nowadays it is so easy to go the easier route and pick up your phone and get on Facebook or get on, you know, Instagram. And so those little triggers, uh, I'm doing the best I can to really have that discipline and say, this is my priority right here, right now. And let me make the most out of it. And trust me, they will see that. And you never hear it, but you know, they do compare you to other interns, right? And so that one intern who does have that discipline and it is just crossing those check boxes, um, they will notice that, right? And so sometimes when that comes to, you know, how much you're gonna make or what position you're gonna start off at when you're professional, uh, that matters, right? And so the last one would be to, I would say to ask your network, your coworkers about what they're working on. Uh, and so, you know, we all know that people love talking about themselves and that's not a problem so when you ask them about what they're working on um they they're, they're you know they're open to express themselves um they see that you're open to learning new things uh and it builds that trust that you know that bridge to where next time you need help on something they will be a lot more willing to since since they've had a good you know not sort of work related conversation um and so those things have have really really helped me a bunch Awesome. Yeah, that's great advice. Uh, Kavya, would you like to add anything? Oh, uh, yeah, I just want to, you know, add my experience. If I talk about, you know, seeking an internship, I basically think so. Think that, you know, there are three major platforms. So um, LinkedIn, uh, then Handshake and Indeed. If I talk about networking, so uh, LinkedIn is a pure source of networking. I don't like it's my personal opinion. I don't find it very useful for the application, but in terms of networking, it's the best source. So networking is must. It, it's actually important if you get to know someone and they can directly refer you that enhances your chances of being selected. The second platform would be indeed you can just apply. You know, the, the, there are so many applications and 
I personally got so many, you know, calls from India. And the third would be handshake. So Indeed and handshake is one of the major for application, but for networking, you know, just try on LinkedIn. It, it is the best search. Uh, if I talk about my experience, I just want to, uh, like, if I just want to add something regarding the internship that you should be actually very punctual. You should respect what the other person is saying. You should listen more and speak less. So these are the key points which I, I, I just want to add on. Yeah, thank you. And Tao, lastly, your advice for making the most of an internship. So you're, once you have that internship, one of the ways to make the most out of it is to communicate, communicate, communicate. I'm pretty sure everyone has heard that, you know, communication it is key, but it definitely is key. You know, it's important that you talk to your boss, be comfortable with talking to your manager because over communicating is so much better than under communicating, which is one of the things that my manager actually told me when we shifted from working in person to virtual. It's important to communicate, especially in a virtual um, platform as well. You have to utilize your communication platforms as much as possible, and it also helps build your interpersonal skills, which job recruiters and hiring managers definitely look at as well. And if you do want um, a full time job offer in the company that you're currently interning for, be eager to learn and you know if they see that they can see that potential that you do want to learn you do want to grow and you definitely do want to contribute those skills that you learned at your internship at your full-time job yeah awesome so all great advice definitely develop those professional skills ask questions be curious try new things that's all wait now and having an internship is definitely the time to explore and learn it's a learning experience as well as a job opportunity so definitely take it full advantage of any opportunity that you have um, and so our last question for the panelists is going to be uh what do you wish that you had known before starting the internship so we'll start with ashley Okay, um, I would say that I kind of wish I knew better how to deal with time management. I think that's really important, um, especially if you're a student at the same time that you have a job or intern opportunity, because at the time I had a job, I had two internships and I was taking a class. And so like uh, sometimes you would maybe start slacking in one area and you have to reset and think, okay, I have all these things I have to do and I have to make time for each of them and prioritize them. And so I think one of the most important things going into an internship that you need to consider, and I wish I knew better going into it, was time management and just um, being able to prioritize what's most important to you, but also making sure you honor your commitments and that you're getting a uh, for example, I mentioned I didn't like my internship, um, but I, that I had to finish out the time commitment that I had made, which was a couple months, um, and you can't just, you know, give up on that. So you have to make sure to honor your commitments and um, develop better time management skills, I guess. Definitely great advice. Uh, next, we'll go to Javier. What do you wish you had known? Um, that's uh, That's kind of a hard one for me. Um, I would say, I mean, my answer kind of comes from like this comes with time when you're in an internship, but really just kind of knowing more of, of my work ethic and um, sort of what I can handle um, work wise. But again, that that's more of just like you learn as you go and they're very accepting of you knowing that. And so uh, I guess I put some pressure on myself, but one thing that I did wish I had known is how open they are to you sort of making these mistakes and, and accepting these stretch goals. And so that would have probably taken a little bit less pressure on me um, kind of through the application process and just and thinking like, oh man, I, I might have to be perfect since it's Lockheed Martin, you know, but that's not the case at all. Uh, again, like I said, it's very self-paced. Uh, and so if you are busy there, they want you to speak up and say, hey, I have, you know, these two or three things that I'm juggling. Um, you could please give me a week or two. They they actually, I'm sure at the end of the day, they say, wow, you know, this man is not just, you know, taking everything he can just to try to look good. Uh, and so that that wouldn't kind of knowing that would have helped. And so I like to share that with people. Um, don't put too much pressure on yourself. And the second point that sort of follows that 
is that I've learned that your internship experience doesn't quite heavily matter as much as you think. And so when you are trying to apply to these bigger companies, um, if you're interested, uh, you don't have to have a whole bunch of internship experience, if any, right? The, the personal projects help, um, just being in clubs help a lot and sort of just doing things outside of the classroom in general that are anything related to what you're studying just shows that you're interested and you have that passion and that's what they're looking for. And so the reason I've seen that is because I've seen multiple uh, interns at Lockheed Martin that either come like straight from high school or that have never had an internship before and this is their first internship. And so that honestly, that threw me off guard. I thought, wow, like, you know, I thought if you get into Lockheed, you have to really be on top of things and have a lot of experience, but that's not the case. And so I hope you guys can, you know, open your mind up and and just work on, you know, making yourself a look, look a lot more professional um, with anything that you've done. Um, and yeah, that, that definitely has helped me and it helps when I spread that to other people. Yeah, definitely great advice. I think most companies, you know, they're they hiring you as an intern, so they don't expect you to have tons of work experience. They just want to see like your work ethic. So definitely great advice. Uh, we'll hear from Kavya next. Oh, I actually agree with both of them, but just I just want to add only one small thing. That is, mm -hmm. if I knew I could, you know, uh, deal with stressful situations calmly, that would that would have been, you know, very helpful for me during my internship days because there are times when you have to deal with hectic situation. But, you know, but that was the time, you know, it, it went difficult for me. So if I knew, you know, how to deal with the situation calmly, uh, it would have been better for me. Yeah, good advice also. And that goes back to what Ty was saying earlier with communication. If you communicate to your boss that you, you need time or you have school, they are very understanding that you are a student. So lastly, Ty, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, so for me, do your research. Make sure you understand the job description that you're applying for just in case you do have any questions about it. And especially, you know, right before you start Managers are probably going to assume that you've already read through the job description and have an understanding of it. So if you don't have an understanding of it and you do have questions, be sure to address that with your managers. And one thing is another piece of advice. Don't doubt yourself. You know, you don't know the potential you have to achieve great things. You know, the internship that I have now was actually initially for graduate students. But, you know, if you're confident and if you're able to demonstrate that you have those skills necessary to fulfill those job requirements, you'll be able to get those internships. Definitely great advice to end on to definitely believe in yourself and also be prepared, you know, going into any internship interview. It's definitely take it seriously, as we've said. So be prepared, do your research. But yeah, believe in yourself. So it looks like we don't have too many questions in the chat box, but I think David has some follow up. So I'll, I'll turn it over to him now. Yeah, um, everyone emphasized the importance of networking. Um, and we hear that all the time, how important that is. You know, you look at the data, it will tell you that 80% of positions are filled through referral and aren't even advertised. So we know networking is important, but I know for a lot of young professionals uh, and students starting out, it's terrifying, right? I mean, uh, for some personalities, it's really scary. So what are some of the, what are some things that you, you feel like you could do um, to, to start to build your network? Maybe take some baby steps. Would anyone like to, to talk about how you developed your network or what things you might do? I have a few things to say. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Tao. So for me, what I did is through this, I added people that I've met through the student organizations that I joined at UTA on LinkedIn. And I also added my classmates on LinkedIn because you know, they're all there to network as well. And it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. You're here to help each other and build each other up. So definitely utilize your resources, utilize the people that you met through organizations or your classes as well. And so you'll be able to learn about each other, learn, you know, about each other's aspirations through LinkedIn as well. And, you know, just be each other's little cheerleader. <laughs> yeah, great advice. Uh, I also wanted to add something to that as well. Yeah, uh, go ahead, so Javier. Mine is more related to uh, like while you are networking or, or like, you know, even just 
a few minutes before you're going to network. And so um, I've heard a lot of my a lot of my friends have told me that, you know, they do get those butterflies or, or like, you know, their heart starts beating and they start getting really nervous before talking to someone or presenting. Uh, and so one thing that has really helped me is sort of breathing exercises. Just take very deep, long breaths and you will feel your heart like coming back into its <laughs> original place. Uh, and I do that before I talk to someone very important, before I present. Uh, it greatly helps me out a whole bunch. And, um, you know, I, I've also been told that I'm a bit more expressive than like a regular engineer. And so I kind of want to encourage, you know, the engineering students uh, to try to build um, that, that, you know, sort of that social, that social aspect. Um, because, you know, to be honest, I've heard many times, you know, you're at, you can have the best idea in the world, but if you do not know how to present that idea effectively to a guy that doesn't know, you know, about physics or whatever the case may be, um, you have to have those skills um, so you can build that network, you can build that trust, and, and you can express yourself a bit better, and people will be a lot more receiving to, to what you want to do and, you know, your end goal of networking effectively. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Any other thoughts on networking? Yeah, I have something that I could add real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I think it's something that might get overlooked a little bit, but it, when when I guess that it applies more to when you're networking, but just be nice to people and be open and inviting. I think that um, when it comes to like, I don't know, it just boils down to having a conversation with someone and I found it always helps me to just talk to them as a person and not talk to them as this person is a potential employer or know someone who would be a potential employer. Just have a conversation with them like a normal human conversation and it, it's way less intimidating if you look at it like that. Um, and I also think you can come off more confident if you look at it like that. Whereas I know if I looked at someone as a potential employer, I would be way more formal, way more um, worried about everything I say kind of see everyone's normal person, I can have a normal conversation with them. Yeah, definitely also yeah. great advice. Oh, I just want to add a small pinch of it. So if I talk about LinkedIn, you know, when you message around like 10 people, there would be only two people who hardly reply. So never get down by that thing. Plus, whenever someone replies you just try to make that conversation very strong so that you know you have a very lasting impression and the outcome should be good from that yeah definitely thank you a second question that often comes up i know we have a very large international student population on campus uh, and uh, that search can be challenging or different for an international student without a doubt uh, there's some different things uh, that, that need to be considered um, we talked about you know being persistent, not getting discouraged. Uh, would anyone like to speak uh, to speak to that to those issues about the international student search process? Oh, I am an international student, so I just want to add one thing. You know, uh, when I was searching for the internship, it was actually difficult, and it got worsened by COVID nineteen. So you know, my hopes got drained up. But I never gave up. You know, there are opportunities where in, which are actually lined up for you. You just have to find it up. As like I told you, you know, it's all about networking. So just network, 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 and just try to fill in the application very nicely, but never lose your hopes. Definitely, great advice. Thank you. Before we close, I just wanted to uh, to check with the panel to see if there was any any parting words of wisdom that anyone would. Uh, would like to to offer before we before we wrap. You guys have been fantastic so far. I can't squeeze much more out of you. You've really done a fantastic <laughs> job. But if there is yeah. anything else, I'm going to give you a couple seconds. If there's anything else you'd like to say before we wrap things up, I would have one quick thing to say. Um, kind of just related to you know everything I've been talking about, but really, guys, please please don't be afraid to put yourself in these uncomfortable situations because that's how you grow. Like, you know, get out of your bubble, uh, you know, go out there to um, even events as far as in Dallas and stuff, right? To where you don't know anyone, right? And I know that seems very intimidating to a lot of people, 
Um, but really, you know, kind of getting in those situations where your heart is beating fast is how, you know, you can break, you can make those breakthroughs and, and feel and build that confidence over time. And so that will help you in professional life and personal life, um, just in general, you know, building that confidence through those uncomfortable situations has, has been a great benefit to me. I agree with Javier 100%. I think that, um, you know, like you said, it's sometimes it's it's okay to be in uncomfortable situations because you get to learn from it, you get to grow from it, and you get to build those skills that are applicable to not only your job and professional life, but also your personal lives as well. So don't be afraid to reach out to people, especially, you know, for advice or resume tips, interview tips, or anything like that. There, We are your fellow peers, so don't be afraid to reach out to us if y'all do have any questions. So there's a small quote by Thomas Caroline that there's no pressure, no diamond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, love it. Uh, well, I want to take a second and uh, sincerely thank our panel. Uh, you guys were absolutely fantastic. I don't think we could have had a put together a better panel. So fantastic work. Also, Kimberly, I want to thank you. A fantastic job uh, moderating and also thank um, our our audience so please join us again the same time tomorrow from one to two for the Mavs Edge employer internship panel again you'll find links to some really valuable information and events in the comments section uh, and just best of luck to everyone uh, this semester thank you good luck yeah thanks everyone thank you